Let's do this. The photographer says to me, I can't wait until your next opening. I start to correct her and say with poetry, it's called a reading. <laughs> or a performance, sometimes a slam, and I realize maybe that's the problem, so I step on my loud and say, yes, please, come to my next opening. It will not be all good light and gallery smiles, but I will fresh slice the walls for you, hang my absurd, and wait for the wine to spill. It's been a long time since I've really shown anything. Notice the 10-foot installation of talks too much. I eat margarine when I'm nervous. I get nervous when you like me. I describe things poetically to keep from saying what I really think. This here is my father. Notice his head, always asleep on the stove, his hands, bloated like a drunken liver. I drink when I can't decide who to be. I speak Irish when you're not looking. I am angry. Almost never. Which means you best prepare yourself for the nasty awkward that will rain down upon you when I decide some things deserve my angry. I will let you mold me in your image because I want you to see how beautiful you mean to me. I fall in love like some women fall in mortgage. I have damn near become my mother. <laughs> Minus five husbands and a bad case of arthritis, but I am still cracking knuckles and divorcing. And just like her, I'm a magical Christmas light show of ideas with no ability to follow through. I want to solve everything, move everywhere, be the greener other side for you, but here's a ticket to the moment that I surrender. This portrait is called I Don't Know a Damn Thing. I am terrified. My children will ask why I didn't try harder. I can never be alone, never ever alone. So I come here to places like this where we sit with our small plate of fruit and cheese, <laughs> cock our head to one side and say, I can't believe someone pinned my stomach to a canvas and that <laughs> is why we do this. Because this is an invitation to stop swallowing the art in your mouth. This is an invitation to stop ripping yourself apart. This is an invitation to be alive nude. Let them draw you dirty, flawed, and glistening. This is an invitation to your opening. so that she could, she could do her country songs and we'd be okay, so just, just a little, all right? The night we plucked 1,000 prickly pear burrs from her ass. I kind of want to say arse. Just the spirit of things, okay. It was strangely erotic. Each time the tweezers would grab hold of a small stinging ghost, her butt cheeks wince, and the backs of her thighs tightened like the nervous flinch of a first kiss. It had to be arousing for her. <laughs> to be sprawled naked on the sofa, each freckle pierced our fingers, eagerly rubbing her pink skin to feel for its sharp shadow as we worked. We laughed about the epic headlock, the cackling boys, the collapsing push bush, the PBR can strewn across the lawn, the fireworks shaking the horizon like the last grimy hour of a warehouse rave. We never outgrow explosion. And we bitched about how our cycles have been forced into each other, how you really shouldn't put blood in the compost heap. It seems to attract animals. How we've forgotten how to be animals and how he will never really love her. We did not talk about how we found her, how we could hear the guttural sobs all the way from the living room, the hot shower only rinsing the sound of porcupine curled up in a thin stream of mascara. We just plucked, as if each burr were a moment of pain, caught, wiped on the warm washcloth, and replaced with the forgiving lust of friends. <laughs> husband's name, my maiden name is Barry, and my mom's name is Murphy, so I'm like, really Irish. <laughs> Sand. These are not a facade. Um, speaking of those lovely family members, <laughs> my mother says, every straight girl has an Anne Hesh moment. 
where they meet a woman so amazing, they question everything about their sexuality. <laughs> my mother's Anne Hesh moment was named Kate. We think this is how my sister really got her name while pregnant. The doctors told her it was a boy. She cried so hard she gave birth to a girl. There are no fathers in my family. Only men were married to mothers. Men who leave mothers. Sometimes I think if a man could hold me hard enough, it would make my grandmother feel wanted. When I told my mother that I was going to marry a black man, she said, it's just so hard. Her throat pinched between finger and thumb of 1968 glass bottles thrown at her head, students rioting in the streets, shouting her name. I said, Mama, it's okay. People don't act like that anymore. After the divorce, they said the only way a woman in Oklahoma could lose, lose custody of her kids was if she was a murderer or gay. The first time I made love to a woman, we felt like two wooden matches with one eager head, an elegant factory mistake. My grandmother says they used to call lesbian couples Boston marriages. That sounds funny to me now. The first time I fell in love with a woman, I held her fist in my palm for hours. How strange that I could not make a baby with this swelling seed. When I held my lover in the Capitol Rotunda, as they signed the proclamation of morality, I wish I had kissed her mouth loudly inside the cacophony of hymns and protests, but I stayed silent. I wonder if Kate Ever listen to the crackling pain buried under the breastplate of my mother and wanted to start a fire?